what you've achieved in life and you don't like being complimented, you may have imposter syndrome. Now, I'd never heard of it either, but apparently many people have it. In fact, 70% of successful people have this syndrome. Yes, 70%, including Albert Einstein and Meryl Streep. Pauline also feels this way, despite the fact that she's young and has done so much in her life already. She blogs about this and openly talks about mental health. And Pauline joins me on the programme right now. Pauline, thank you very much indeed for finding the time to talk to me tonight. No, thank you for inviting me. Really happy to be here. So how would you describe imposter syndrome to others? Um, for me, um, imposter syndrome is when, exactly what you said, it's when you feel like a fraud. Um, it's like a constant for me anyway. Um, an anxiety that at any minute, you'll be found out um and it's just it's just constant stress and um just feeling like you don't really belong um with like where you are even if you've worked really hard um getting to to that mm. point the thing that you said there that really intrigues me is being found out what do you mean by that um it's like for me um it's like having going to work and then um, you know, going to the kitchen and making a cup of coffee uh, and then just speaking to your colleagues and saying something that makes them think that you're not qualified right. for for the job that you're in. Um, and it's just it's just a constant fear that you'll slip up, even though even though you're like completely uh, qualified and everything's fine. But it's just that constant stress that at any minute someone's going to be someone's going to turn around and say actually do you even know what you're actually talking about oh. so let's go right back to the beginning tell me about your family what was the setup like at home when you were growing up um so at home growing up it was just a normal you know typical family I have a mom dad sister brother um and overall we're, we're quite a really happy family um and i think um so i grew up in sheffield how would you describe and, um, yourself as a child? Um, uh, so as a child, um, I think I'd describe myself as very dramatic, bubbly, um, imaginative, creative, but also very shy. So even though I had all these ideas and um, I was quite bubbly and had, um, I wanted to share these ideas, I would, be, I would keep them to myself, um, often in like little diaries or, you know, my own sort of thing. Did you have many friends? Uh, yes, yeah, like, I mean, at school I had um, a, a small group of friends. I wouldn't say that I was that popular kid. Um, to be honest, I was. I, w I would avoid them at all costs. I wasn't really, I, w I didn't really stand out, and I made it my business not to stand out. So, so were you was... happy to be alone in them, would you say? Yes, yeah, yeah, there was, um, uh, when I was growing up as a kid at school, um, so, at some lunch times I just spent my time in the libraries um i just wanted to sit there by myself um and just do my own thing um just because i felt like the my ma the majority of the time i didn't feel like i belonged um with the wider like uh, groups at school but with the group of friends that i did have they were absolutely fine can you remember the first time you felt like a fraud um i think i think i've I'm trying to think of like an exact time I felt like a fraud, but I think the one that sticks out to me the most is, um, so in my first year, I had the opportunity to um, do a work experience, like internship thing in Sheffield. Uh -huh. um, and I, so my, my degree background um, is in biomedical sciences, but um, I did a, um, my work experience in the tech industry. And um, as soon as I sat down at my desk um, on my first day, I felt like such a fraud. It never hit me um, stronger in the face than that, than that moment because I was sat there with a bunch of um, um, techie guys who had a, a computer science degree and I was sat there um, as a work experience student with a biomedical science degree. I just felt so out of place. I felt like a fraud. I felt like everyone was thinking the same as well. Uh, they probably weren't, but um, I, that's, that's what, I, what I felt. Did you keep your feelings to yourself or did you go home and discuss it maybe at home how you felt? 
oh, I, I never opened up about this um, to, to anyone. It was always just kept to myself. Um, I think most of it is just shame that I feel this way. Um, I think that obviously led to um, my feelings building up over time. Um, I was scared of um, judgment from like my family, my friends. Um, and I think that's, that's why um, I, I, over time it sort of built up. And now um, it got to a point where I was like, actually, I need to stop um, you know, keeping it in because it just wasn't working. How did you do at school? Um, overall, um, at school, I think I, pre- I did pretty pretty well. I think I'd say I was an average student, um, but my my school experience wasn't the best. So, as I said, I was quite shy, even though I had all these ideas, and I and I felt like I've always been quite extroverted, but only when I'm with people um, I've known for quite a bit. So, um, yeah, at school, I felt like, um, I, you know, I was your average student, but I also had bad experiences with, like, bullying. So um, that didn't really help. And I never really stood out. So overall, my performance at school was just more than average. So, Your parents, did they praise you for your achievements over the years? Um, so my parents, um, especially my mum, she wanted me to go into the medical field and that's sort of what pushed me into biomedical sciences. Um, and for, for me, when whenever I did achieve something that was related, uh, anywhere related to, um, you know, becoming a doctor or going into the medical field, it, she, she, she praised me a lot and my parents were really, really proud of me and are really, really proud of me now. But um, whenever I did really well in other subjects, like, I don't know, like arts or computing, for example, um, it never was praised regularly but um, it, it, they were still proud. And I think over time that's changed. And I think both my parents are very proud of me now. So they obviously had uh, an idea of what where they wanted you to be. And obviously that's yeah. where the praising came because that's the field they wanted you to be in. Yeah, exactly. Would yeah. you consider yourself as a perfectionist? Oh, definitely. I am 100% a perfectionist. Um, I think, like, um, I can think of uh, so many examples, but um, I've I've, I've had this habit of not showing people my completed work until it was 100% 100 done. Um, It needed to be, like, 100% up to my standards. It had to be pixel perfect before I showed it to anyone. And if for some reason I had to show my progress so far or, um, I don't know, my work, um, someone saw, saw my work and it was incomplete, um, I would always like sort of back it up and say, I'm so sorry if this is crap. I'm so sorry if this is bad. Um, this is just because um, I'm not done yet. Um, please don't judge me. I would like be very de- defensive. So yeah, I, I am 100% perfectionist. How often do you dismiss, ignore or downplay compliments? Oh, I um, I definitely downplay and ignore compliments a lot. Um, I think I think I'm actually improving with this now. Now that I've um, become more aware of like my imposter syndrome and like uh, my confidence has grown over time. But um, more often than not, um, I just it, it is it is like a habit of me to sort of be like, okay, thank you, and just. Um, hide it under the rug rather than like actually taking the time to appreciate it and even like appreciate myself for working on on something um so yeah i definitely downplay uh compliments and i don't really I, they just make me feel very uncomfortable and they shouldn't because you know i've worked really hard for what, whatever i've worked on so well i was going to yeah. say that pauline you know when people praise you or compliment you why do you think they're doing that what's their motive do you think I think um, obviously most of the time uh, people um, people like praise me and compliment me because um, they want to. It's their way of saying that I'm doing a really good job, and they want to um, make they want me to to know that I'm doing a good job and recognize me for it. But I think there is a part of me that's still uncomfortable with that and uh, I don't I don't really want to hear it. I don't want to know that I'm doing a good job. If that makes sense. It just makes me again jump back into that um, into that mindset that actually um, 
you know, I'm an imposter, I'm a fraud, and I start making excuses for the fact that I've done well, if that makes sense. It's, it's really crazy. It's a very interesting conversation we're having here tonight. Uh, Pauline, if you just hang on there a second. Uh, need to break here for some music, but we'll come back and talk some more in a few moments' time on Late Night Graham Torrington, BBC WM 95.6. To one o'clock tonight, it's Lena Graham Torrington talking to Pauline Nawaz about imposter syndrome. She feels she doesn't deserve praise or recognition for the tremendous efforts that she makes to break down the stigma of mental illness. How does the syndrome affect you day to day in your life, then, Pauline? Um, So I think the biggest thing, um, the biggest way uh, imposter syndrome has. Um, impacted my life is that um, especially when I start a new job I'm like immensely anxious um, before I st- before I start my job and going into work because I'm so scared that when I start speaking to my new colleagues um, they'll they'll find out that actually I'm not qualified I'm not good enough and maybe start questioning why the company hired me in the first place um, and another thing, another way like imposter syndrome affects me is that um, for some reason I feel really guilty. Um, I feel like I shouldn't, I don't deserve to to be in my in, in that role. And you know, when I'm sat there doing my work, I, I sometimes just stop and think, actually, um, did I was I just lucky getting here, or was this because of X, Y, and Z? Uh, did did I actually work towards it, or what, was this all just luck? So I think it is just constantly, uh, it's a constant battle with my own thoughts. It's, it is really difficult. Um, but I think again, it's one of those things that. Um, that you sort of work towards and I think that with the strategies I've applied uh, now in my day to day um, it's helped so what's the difference between that and confidence then um, I think both of them sort of go hand in hand um, I think when I'm feeling um, when I do have um, imposter syndrome when I go into work like for example when I'm starting my new a new role um, I think having that imposter syndrome and having those negative those negative words and thoughts um those heavily in, um, affect my confidence whereas when i am feeling um very confident i can sort of fight back that imposter syndrome i can fight back those negative emotions and the negative thoughts that i tell myself so i do think they do go like hand in hand you mentioned coping mechanisms a few moments ago is there anything yes. that you can do to stop feeling this way then um, for me, I've done a couple of things to, to help me over the last, I think, like three years since I um, um, became uh, aware of it. Um, for me, I've um, started creating like a folder on my laptop of all of the um, praises that I've got uh, from um, from my colleagues or people I've worked with. So if that's like a nice thank you email just saying, great work, um, thank you so much for doing this. It's made a huge impact on X, Y, Z. Um, I save those emails, um, save those messages, and I put them in a folder. And whenever I'm feeling like, actually, I don't belong here, my work is bad, it's, I'm not affect, I'm not impacting anyone, um, I'm a fraud, then I like going into that folder and just reminding myself that I have actually impacted other people's lives, and um, they've seen that I've, they've seen the effects and everything. So uh, that's one thing I do. Um, and I also um, have started practicing a bit of self-love. So um, whenever I um, do achieve something, I'm open about it and I consistently um, talk about it. I'm not, I try and force myself to not be um, shy about it, but to really embrace it and say, actually, yes, I um, impacted uh, this project. I um, added value in this project by doing this. Um, this is this is um, this is what I've done. And I think just owning what um, what I've done and being um, open about it and vocal about it has really helped my confidence and therefore uh, improved like those those negative thought cycles. Um, I've also done a bit of um, so the last three years I've, I've been doing uh, meditation and some mindfulness practice and all of that has really all added up to just make me more aware of um, my, my abilities and more uh, make me more confident with um, with what I can do and you know add value to whatever work I'm, I'm contributing to. Pauline you blog about mental health how did that start? 
this is a bit of a long story, actually. Um, but um, so in 2016, um, I was quite a anxious person, um, and you know, I, I still am at some 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 points today. But um, back in 2016, I experienced the most stressful year of my life. Um, lots of um, stress from like university I was in my second year about to go into my third and I was also looking at four placement years um, but I was just highly uh, stressed out and a lot of uh, various personal things were happening around that time as well so it all started just adding up and it became very overwhelming and I actually went to uh, my GP and told them about how how I was feeling how it was getting difficult to cope because um started having very bad um, anxiety, panic attacks, um, and those were just suffocating and really affected my day-to-day, and it started affecting my family and the people close to me, so my friends and, and my relationships. And so, um, yeah, I went to my GP and I said, I need I, I need this to stop. I'm, I feel really depressed. I don't know what to do. Um, so I was prescribed some med- uh, medication for it, and um, that made me feel worse. Um, it didn't help me at all. I, I reached a point where I was like, I was in a very, very, very bad place. Um, I was like, actually, I, I need to take control of my health, uh, your know, mental health especially, because I can't continue to live like this. I can't continue to um, to um, just just continue to feel like this. It's not fair on me. It's not fair on my family. It's not fair on anyone else. So yeah, I started working on myself, and I started looking at other sort of alternatives and for me what worked was the whole meditation mindfulness and during this whole journey i started um writing about it at first i had just a personal diary i used to write like every every week on how i was feeling um and the the lifestyle changes i was making and making sure that it was a consistent habit and then eventually when i started talking to uh, my friends about what i was doing and they started complimenting on how uh, happier i looked and how healthier i looked i decided to share sort of my journey on on my blog and it was actually in 2017 um, i wrote a blog about uh, it's called uh, a year of positive habits and a focus on self-care and that was still to this day my most viewed blog post on, on my blog ever um it's just uh, yeah that's where it started and since then i've been sharing like my journey um um, since, since 2016 because obviously it's not been like a straight line it's not just been like um, since that day I've been happy every single day because obviously life gets to you so I've been um, talking about how I've adapted to different situations and just sharing how I feel and sharing how um, it's a normal thing everyone goes through it and that there is a light at the end of the tunnel because it, see, uh, in 2016 I didn't really see that um, and I think you know sharing it on my blog has has helped a lot of people and for me um helped me as well whenever i feel like i'm going back down that route i like to remind myself that actually i got through a very very rough patch in my life and i can do it again so you spoke for three minutes there you know without me coming in at all (laughs) (laughs) sorry about that (laughs) no don't apologize it's wonderful it really is how can people find out about your blog um, so my blog is, um, if you just type in Pauline Navas on Google, it should be the first thing that pops up. But my URL is uh, pauline.com and that's spelled P-A-W-L-E-A-N.com. Well, to make things very easy, we've uh, posted all the details on my Facebook page, which is <laughs> Late Night Graham Torrington, which my listeners are well aware of. So they just need to go to my Facebook page, Late Night Graham Torrington. And there's a picture on there of you as well, a beautiful picture, a uh, stunning young lady. But I know you don't like compliments, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I, say that, I say that just as a joke at the end there as well. <laughs> Can I just ask you, because you knew you were going to be talking to me on the radio tonight, how yeah. anxious... Have you been about it? <laughs> Actually, um, just because I do a few of these, um, um, like I want to say, like every every month or so. Um, so it's getting it, it's gotten better now. Um, but um, just an hour before, I was quite anxious. I was sat here like, oh should I actually do this? I'm quite nervous. Um, 
but um, as, as you know, as it got closer to the time, I, I, I just remembered that actually this is such uh, this is for such a good cause, and the people will reach is uh, it'll be it'll be fantastic, and it'll definitely help someone. So, um, well, it felt Pauline, like it was worth it. Pauline, <laughs> you've achieved it. <laughs> Thank you. It's fantastic. A very, very interesting topic we've been talking about tonight. Pauline, thank you very much indeed for joining me on the programme this evening. Thank you so much. Thank you. Stories. Music. Life. Music.